Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. And this is a special format of the Run Lift Mom podcast because it is a Saturday with Susie, a quick tip to save you time. I can't give you more time, but I sure can help you with the hacks that can help you prioritize and make the most of what you got. This Saturday with Susie episode, we are talking about BHAGs. That stands for Big Hairy Audacious Goal. Those of you who have been longtime listeners will recognize this episode from one of my earliest. In fact, it was one of the demos that I had for the Run Lift Mom podcast. Still, I stand by it and I think this advice is worth revisiting. This will give you rationale for stepping outside of the SMART acronym as your goal setting. And SMART means specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. I want you to think bigger than that. So listen up. Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where as the name would suggest, we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. Today, I want to talk to you about BHAGs. What is a BHAG? It's an acronym for Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. These are stretch goals, something that is higher than what's historically or market realistic. This is not some pie-in-the-sky fantasy, but it does make you scared. How do you know you've identified a BHAG? Nausea. It makes you both excited and slightly sick to think about. Here's the funny thing about BHAGs. You can't use your traditional SMART acronym. Have you ever heard of that? That specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time-based. We've all done it. If you've ever taken a business class, you know what I'm talking about. You can't do it on BHAGs, though, because the A, attainable, and the R, realistic, not relevant. Big, hairy, audacious goals will challenge your mainstream goal-setting thinking. I want to give you a couple of personal examples, first in the form of a BHAG I'm currently chasing, and then in the form of a BHAG realized. So my first marathon was in 2003. I thought it was a bucket lister, but then I felt an urge to prove that it wasn't a fluke, so I ran my second in the following year. Enter my first job out of college. It was travel heavy and in a multi-state territory. Y'all, before I knew it, I was inadvertently kind of crossing off states just to have something to do on the weekends. Then I met a member of the 50 State Marathon Club, and they let me know I only needed 10 to qualify for that club. This was during my ninth marathon in my ninth state. I figured my efficiency thus far was an advantage, and with 41 more states to go, did you hear me? 41 more states to go. That's over a thousand miles. I set that goal to run a marathon in each of the 50 states. The story doesn't end here. Marathon after marathon, I got faster and faster. I have literally participated in every pace group possible. My first marathon, it took me well over five hours. And now y'all, my PR is just under 330. So as marathons under four hours became more frequent, I stretched my BHAG into another BHAG, run a marathon in each of the 50 states, each in under four hours. My current overall state count is at 47, and my sub four count is at 29. Always be chasing something. (laughs) So pause. This is a goal that's still in progress. I want to share with you my personal key to getting as far into it as I have before I tell you about a BHAG realized. Here's the key. I am not motivated. I am disciplined. Y'all, motivation runs out and discipline doesn't. Folks who are running their first marathon will often ask me for my top piece of advice or the key. And I'll tell them this. Do what the training schedule says, even when you don't feel like it. Guys, that's discipline, not motivation. Motivation is quotes on Instagram and watching YouTube videos. You end up becoming what the fitness industry calls a hot burner. (laughs) You get super fired up out of the gates, but eventually you lose steam and drop out. When you are disciplined, 
You don't feel excited 100% of the time, but you do it anyway, and you achieve something awesome. I've been working on this BHAG now for 13 years. Some years were way more exciting than others. Some I earned 12 states in a calendar year, and in others I was pregnant with triplets and didn't earn any. Now, the so time back in, okay? <laughs> the BHAG that most people know me for, if you've you know Googled my name, um, <laughs> you know me because I did something with my now three-year-old triplets who had been born early at 30 weeks and spent the first two months of their lives in the hospital. Uh, When they were one, we wanted to do something big for the first anniversary of their NICU homecoming just to honor the work that God did through the hospital staff. So having been a stroller runner with my oldest son, Christian, the BHAG was setting a record for the fastest half marathon with a triple pram female. That's the official Guinness World Record title, and that's what we went after. Believe it or not, that process began in January for a late October race. First, I had to submit my category to the folks at Guinness and wait for it to be approved. Then I had to have my stroller three and a half foot wide with side-by-side feeding, had to have that approved. Um, Then after that, I had to submit pieces of media uh, about the efforts to break the record. Um, This was all before the actual event and before a separate, separate application process after I had done the race with video proof, witness statements, RD certifications, all sorts of stuff. Alongside this, also did fundraising for the NICU where my triplets had spent time. Meanwhile, I'm working a full-time job. I have a two-year-old, newborn triplets. Did I mention my husband had just come home from Afghanistan? Y'all, take note. This is once again where discipline trumps motivation. I know it because I've experienced it. My training runs for this with the triple jogger went really well. I purposely trained on hills and I did a ton of strength training because the course was hilly and then the stroller was 120 pounds collectively and that was pretty much my body weight. So it was 25 pounds for each child plus 45 pounds for the stroller. So... Guinness World Record, you know it. On race day, we completed 13.1 miles in 201, just shy of the two-hour goal that I had kind of set for myself, but it was still enough to officially be a record. Now, that record has since been broken several times by women way more talented an athlete than I am. Um, But the coolest thing to come out of the whole experience, those women are now my personal friends. So, There's a BHAG in action and a BHAG achieved. Big, hairy, audacious goal. Do you have one? Why not? Guys, I hope this was helpful for you to listen through. Personal examples can sometimes help us brainstorm. And that's exactly what I want you to do with your own BHAG goal. So I want you to get out a pen and paper, or maybe you're going to the notes section of your phone, and I want you to start brainstorming some purposely pie-in-the-sky goals that you could set your sights on. That's your action step for the day, and until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run, Lift, mom podcast. Hey, Run Lift Mom listeners, you know I'm the mom of four kids under age five, and therefore, I am always looking for ways to work smart, not hard. Anchor is the smartest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. First of all, there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, but Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so then it can be heard on places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole lot more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is quite literally everything you need all in one place. And y'all, it's free. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thank you for listening to the Run Lift Mom podcast. This show began as a passion project in February 2019 as a way to uplift other women in the areas of running, lifting, and motherhood. 
I have been blessed by this project, over 30,000 listens, and I have great relationships with the guests who have come on this show, as well as you, dear listener. Listeners, if you can rate, review, and subscribe, that really helps other folks find the show, also keeps my show sponsors happy. Thank you for being a part of the Run Lift Mom podcast.